What comes to mind when you hear the word condominium? Is it a small, single-family home? A privately owned apartment in a luxury high-rise? Maybe it is a vacation rental in the mountains with ski-in, ski-out access to the slopes. In Georgia, the term condominium arrangement does not refer to a particular architectural style or location. A condominium project doesn't even have to include residential units. As long as there are clearly defined privately owned spaces and co-owned common areas such as sidewalks, parks, green spaces, and community centers, any type of property can be converted to a condominium regime. Examples of non-residential condos include a single slip in a marina, an individually owned parking space in a parking garage, a business located in a strip mall or office park unit owned rather than leased, a separate unit in a storage facility, a hotel room, an airport concourse. Any space that can be clearly defined with words and visual floor map or plat can be part of a condominium arrangement, including single-story homes, apartments, townhomes, and residential units in a high-rise building. How does condominium ownership work? An owner in a condominium arrangement owns his or her unit separately from other properties. Generally speaking, owners have control and financial responsibility over the interior spaces of a home or commercial property unit, while all co-owned spaces within the condominium are managed by an association board, even though ownership is shared with other community property owners. HOA membership is usually voluntary. However, community residents slash owners must always abide by covenants and bylaws even when they decide not to join the association. Property owners may choose paint colors and textures for the kitchen and bath in their two-story home, while the association bylaws govern the color and finishes for exterior siding, window trim, and sidewalks. Property homeowners are also responsible for repair inside the unit, while the association assumes responsibility for maintenance and repair of the common elements. So, homeowners would hire a plumber to clear a clogged drain, while the association would be responsible for replacing damaged sprinkler system parts in the neighborhood park or playground. It is important to note that a condominium association is typically a nonprofit corporation established to manage common elements of a condominium project. The association rarely owns any property. Each owner also owns a percentage of the common elements. Calculating percentage of ownership may involve assigning each unit owner the same percentage. In a community with 36 private owners, each owner would have a common area interest of 1 36th. Sometimes, the common area ownership is unequally divided based on square footage, property type, or another formula approved by the association board or community developers. There are two types of co-owned condominium common areas. Limited common elements, everything outside privately owned units not available to every one owner. For example, covered parking available only to some property owners, outside storage units available to those who live on a certain street with a community, or people with shared balconies or terraces. Common elements. Everything outside the privately owned unit, including roadways, elevator shafts, roof systems, clubhouses, and open parking. Establishing the condominium unit. Legal documents identify specific unit boundaries. Typically, a single story unit includes the flooring material and everything above it, up through and including the lower surface of the roof. 
multi-story condominium regimes may identify unit boundaries as including the floor material and all airspace up to and including the uppermost part of the ceiling. State statute and covenants established by the association may vary in wording, but generally describe the unit boundaries clearly, so that all common areas and privately owned spaces are easily identified. Simply put, common elements are all those spaces that are not part of the unit, and the unit is the space clearly defined in legal documentation. Condominium communities created before 1975 are governed by the Georgia Apartment Ownership Act, AOA. All condominium communities created after July 1, 1975, and those that voluntarily submit to the GCA, are governed under the Georgia Condominium Act. Both groups are also subject to all general statutes and common laws in Georgia. Three Documents Necessary to Create an Approved, Compliant GCA Condominium Each of the following legal documents must be recorded in the Land Records Office to officially create a GCA condominium. 1. Declarative Statement The declaration of condominium must include a written description of legal boundaries for each unit and for common areas, a complete list of private encumbrances, liens, rights, use and management covenants, and easements, such as utility right-of-way, alley access, and common area traffic paths, percentage of common area ownership for each unit, limited common elements, unit assignment per element, 2. Floor Plans An accurate visual representation of the written description of interior legal boundaries. 3. Plats Plats are a visual representation of the condominium project exterior. What else must be done to create a condominium community? Recording GCA documentation is only the first part of creating a condominium community. Since virtually all community associations, homeowner associations, HOAs, property owners associations, POAs, and condominium owner associations, COAs, is a Georgia nonprofit organization, almost every Georgia community association will create a corporation to manage the common areas. The first step is developing Articles of Incorporation. These straightforward documents list initial directors, an organization's physical and mailing address, registered agents, person or persons initiating the incorporation process. Once the initial paperwork is filed, many organizations never review their Articles of Incorporation again, unless the organization is sold, files for bankruptcy, or faces legal challenges. Unlike the Articles of Incorporation, community bylaws are often referred to at least several times every year. They contain specific information about how the organization will operate and detail rules governing, special called meetings, regularly scheduled monthly, quarterly, or annual board meetings, proxy, notice, quorum, and voting requirements, board member and officer service guidelines, including how, when, and where office election is held, term limits, reasons for early discharge slash termination, and more. Association bylaws are subject to change based on membership and or board approval and do not need to be recorded. Articles of incorporation must be recorded with the Georgia Secretary of State. 
the declarant of a condominium project must make two disclosures to first-time buyers. Number one states, Oral representations cannot be relied upon as correctly stating the representations of the seller. For correct representations, reference should be made to this contract and the documents required by Code Section 44.3.111 of the Georgia Condominium Act to be furnished by a seller to a buyer. Number two states, this contract is voidable by the buyer until at least seven days after all of the items required under Code Section 443111 of the Georgia Condominium Act to be delivered to buyer have been received by buyer. The items covered under Disclosure Number 2 are 1 a floor plan of the unit or units being sold slash purchased, 2. Declaration and amendments thereto, 3. The association's articles of incorporation, covenants or bylaws, and amendments thereto, 4. Any ground lease, 5. Any management contract having a term in excess of one year. 6. The estimated or actual budget of the condominium. 7. Any lease of recreational or other facilities that will be used solely by unit owners. 8. Any lease of recreational or other facilities that will or may be used by the unit owners with others. 9. A statement describing the seller's commitments to build or submit additional units, additional recreational or other facilities, or additional property. 10. If this contract applies to a condominium unit which is part of a conversion condominium, a statement describing the condition of certain components and systems, a statement regarding the expected useful life of certain components and systems, and certain information regarding any notices of violation of county or municipal regulations. A dated written acknowledgement of receipt of all said items signed by the buyer shall be prima facie evidence of the date of delivery of said item. The disclosure package provides important information for the buyers. And, if anything is omitted or changed that materially affects the buyer's rights or property value, the buyer has an additional seven days to void a contract from the original date of signing. Any other required disclaimers must be printed in a font not smaller than the largest font in the disclosure package and be bold or capital letters to draw attention to the notice. In summary, any type of property, residential or commercial, can be a unit in a homeowner association as long as the owner has title or deed of trust to the land under any improvements and the airspace above them. In other words, properties cannot be stacked vertically. It is important to store original bylaw and articles of incorporation documents in a safe, accessible place even though they aren't reviewed frequently. Full disclosure is required by law when selling condominium properties. Association membership is optional but beneficial for property owners. Most community associations are nonprofit corporations.